Hi, this lesson 29 from Liberation.fr, the magazine from France that did a huge report on the resurgence of Argentina by the reuse of the Creditos barter system. And uh, this now gets into some really important aspects of that issue. We want to legalize barter. Carlos de Sanzo co-founder of Global Solidarity Network of Truck. And the articles by Vittorio de Filippis and Veronique Soule. And again, the 22nd of August, 2002, in the magazine in France called Liberation. Um, dot fr if you want to go get it this is an important issue it's going to be a historic value someday in abolitionist literature so quote it's a new kind of social compact i consume at your place you consume at mine that contributes to changing mentalities everyone takes charge of themselves carlos de sanzo one of the founders of the global solidarity truck network the main truck barter system in Argentina, Liberación, July 15th, defends the idea of a currency that serves to exchange and not to speculate. So, how was the idea for the truck system born? In 1995, the Mexican financial crisis showed that the effects of globalization could destabilize our economies and that we had to put in place a safety net for the majority of the population. The idea was thus born that a currency that serves exclusively for exchanging and not for speculating, the object being to render people less vulnerable, more autonomous, and capable of taking charge. It is not competition with the state, but of creating an eco-climate that stimulates and helps people. Before the end of the year, we could double our numbers, going from 2 million and reaching 12 million, counting families. The reaction of authorities is rather positive. The Senora de Halde, wife of the president, supports us, as well as the governor of Buenos Aires and also the Salta provinces. Bang, those are names we recognize, right? Salta was the province that did their own provincial bond currency back in the early 80s. And the wife of the president, good stuff. So, in escaping fiscal orthodoxy, isn't your system causing even more problems for public finances? Asks the reporter. We demand a law to legalize barter. A law that recognizes our role as the issuer of a particular currency and permits us to pay taxes. Yes, 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 I wrote in my report. Because we don't want to stay in the gray area, neither legal nor illegal. At the, of course, that gives them protection from counterfeiters if they become legal. At the same time, we are a vulnerable target for the mafias and other counterfeiters who imitate our creditos. This law exists. It is in Parliament, but I fear that it might get lost. As to the loss to the financial system, I would prefer to reverse the argument. One part that is done, or built, in our system is equivalent to savings of the budget of the nation. For example, we have barter contracts with hospitals and private clinics. They reserve spaces for us, and in exchange we offer them cleaning services, building maintenance. Like people, these establishments are existing within the full grip of the crisis, the social protection system in decline, and drastic reductions in subsidies by the state. They are there, therefore, incapable of paying the current upkeeping services unless they adhere to the barter system. For instance, if really we had a crash in Canada, in Calgary, the only people who could take the bus would be the people who had Calgary dollars. And therefore, everybody would join the Calgary dollar system, go borrow some of this community currency so they could take the Calgary bus lines because there's no federal money around. So, yes, 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 yes. The money in circulation is rarer and rarer, which signifies that products are even more blocked up. As well, industry was not ready to face the brutal foreign competition. It's estimated that 60% of everything we produce today does not get sold. Certain sectors of the formal economy, public or private, have therefore forged ties with the barter economy. We offer them a second market. When you get big enough, they can't help join you, right? Government may not help you, and they might not help you at all. When you're big enough, they're going to have to join. Hmm. For example, one agro-alimentary plant furnishes us with three truckloads of bread per week against our services. It is therefore certain to sell out all its stock. It can choose between being paid in creditos or getting services of our plumbers, painters, dentists, mechanics. 
The business is certain to recuperate almost instantly the counter value of its production, while on the formal market with the banking system, it would recuperate its money in six months. Not a big thing because in the meantime, the value of the money is depreciated without counting the disastrous effect of interest rates that are reaching peaks. With barter, the financial costs disappear. John Turmel, why represent our collateral with dirt chips for a fee when we can represent our collateral with our chips for free? So, with barter, software, Lex, the financial costs disappear. In the sectors of glass, textiles, paper, food, or the addition, Hundreds of small and large businesses have joined us because in our economy, informal, everything we produce gets sold. Our market is always in demand. Just like on my island where I have service charge banking, everything gets sold because people have the money to buy it all. Whereas on interest island, all the merchants borrowed 10, paid to produce, inflate their price to 11, but there's only 10 to buy it with, so they're always short. So here, now, the guy says, is barter accepted for payment of taxes? The big question. Not yet, but someday soon, I think. In the suburb of Buenos Aires, we practice taking reductions of local taxes in exchange for street cleaning by members of the network. More and more municipalities have also conceded to us the collection and recycling of garbage, sometimes also the upkeep of roads. After all, government ain't got money. We may as well do it because we're printing our own money. But legally, why wouldn't the government just print their own money? Legally, the municipalities do not have the right to receive anything other than pesos. So they're breaking the law by staying alive. They do accept creditos, but only for settling debts that they would never have recovered otherwise. No question of paying the gas or electric bill yet. For before, each competed in an isolated manner, but now everyone competes for himself, but also for the others, to establish the system of exchange. It's the new social pact of the sort, I'll buy from you, you buy from me, that contributes to changing mentalities. Each takes charge for themselves. Barter reinvents the function of money, which is to create activity, nothing else, while the speculative financial system is hitting the wall. And like I say, let it crash. You often speak of extending barter to other countries. Frankly, isn't that utopic? The reporter doesn't know about computers. Uh, I said, good engineering never ceases until it's ideal. But the guy answered, it already exists among the Mapuche, Oton population in the south of Argentina and those of the south of Chile. The Argentinians send wool, fruit, and receive in exchange tissues, fish. Similar experiences have taken place in neighboring nations, Brazil, Uruguay, Bolivia, Ecuador. Today, we're negotiating with the dockers in Buenos Aires. We'd like to convince the ship owners to transport our products to other countries, particularly Africa. In exchange, we could furnish them with food for their crews, maintenance of their ships, but also stays in our vacation centers. When an emerging nation founders, it's always the same scenario. The IMF and World Bank negotiate in the ministries, then the Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders, and a whole troop of NGOs go in. Why not imagine that we go in too with the local populations, what we are already doing in Argentina? Just bring them their own chips, you know, show them how to print money. In these emerging economies, we have to create protected markets, a little like ecological reserves. Well, you don't actually. It's not important. How far can your barter, how fast can your barter system grow? The guy said, we can't ignore the fact that in one year, at the speed in which the crisis is developing, half the population will find itself in poverty and join a barter network. The system is even more likely to grow as it is the fruit of the failure of irresponsible neoliberal formulas and neoconservative and neo-NDP and neo-everything. It's the damn loan shark and usury that's the problem, not liberalism. This explains no doubt why the government tolerates the barter systems, which are emerging more and more with the real economy. The state is no doubt also conscious of the fact that these barter networks contain the social grumblings. And of course, who's complaining when they're eating and they got <laughs> food for the rent? You know, I mean, money for their 